go with it. <laughs> Good. Um, Brandon, first of all, looking um, a broader subject, do referees need more help? Thinking in particular of the incident in the Arsenal Chelsea game. Yeah, I've really felt for Andre Marner because I think he's an excellent referee. Um, I looked at the incident and, as I said, he, I don't think he get any help whatsoever. You know, the incident's happened so fast. He's got a linesman on that side who's part of his team who could have helped him. He's got a fourth official stood on the side who could have helped him. And uh, if we'd had something that could have stopped the game just literally for a few seconds, it would have uh, made a very difficult situation for him, quite calm, and then the game moves on and no one would have said anything. Instead, it all gets lumped onto the Andre, as I said, who's an excellent referee. And, um, and all of a sudden, the sanctions will be put in place, maybe for him this weekend, I don't know. But certainly, it was... It was something that disappoints me when I see it. For yourself, you were out and about in Liverpool yesterday at the start of the half marathon, yeah. speaking to a number of fans. What were you able to gauge from the Liverpool supporters? It was really excitement in the city. It was a pleasure, first and foremost, to be asked to, to, to be down there for, for the half marathon. It's a unique city, Liverpool. It's got a great vibe around the place, not just for the football, but for life in general. But to be down there amongst 8,500 people, uh, beginning the marathon was, was brilliant and as I said I, I come across many supporters yesterday and obviously they're you know the verve and, and that excitement around the place is, is there to see so uh, so I'm glad that we as the club can bring that and hopefully it will continue You mentioned that they're dreaming as well how do you rate your chances of fulfilling that dream? Well it's good for them that you know to see the, the level of our performance you know um, great to that they can feel excitement and get that little bounce by going to watch their team uh, and for us it's just a culmination of continual work really and we're far from being perfect you know I think Saturday showed that you know the first half we still were a threat going forward but some of our positioning defensively wasn't so good um, but what we've been able to to work on here is that no matter the mistakes that we do make in games that we still have a real positive attitude in the game and an optimistic view to winning the game and uh, and that's something that's shone through over the course of my time here so so for us it's just the continuation of that as I said we we're nowhere near the finished article but whilst we're learning and whilst we're improving uh, we'll hopefully continue to pick up the points and see where it takes us. That ability to score the goals as well does that bring a fear factor for other teams who are facing you? I think every manager will tell you if you if you come up against an opponent that shows no fear in their game to pass the ball and have courage to get on the ball and then can flood forward in numbers and, and get goals, that's always something that as a as a manager can uh, make you think and and you know you need to set your team up to to counter that. So um but I think for us we we're just really enjoying our the moment, enjoying the football. Like I said, we, we've still got a hell of a long way to go before we're, we're near to where I want us to be. But, but certainly we're making strides in order to get there. We're on the right path, that's for sure. And the players are playing with no fear, with great enthusiasm. And, and again, analysing the games like we do, we're identifying the, the real strong qualities that we have in the team. Is it a time that's down to three teams now as well? No, I think it changes every game. Doesn't it? I think that... You know, a team may lose or draw a game and you think they're out of it and someone else loses and draws it. I think that's the nature. I think at the top and at the bottom, it's very, very tight. And um, and for us, as I said, we're up in that top area of the, of the, of the league where we want to be and, and fighting. So, uh, so, as I said, but we don't underestimate any opponent. Still tough games, eight games to go now. So, uh, But we're only really looking to Sunderland. I have to ask you, just with regards to the storage, obviously when you look at his scoring record of 33 and 42, uh, is he in line for an improved contract here? There'll be no contracts talked about till the, the summer. I think our focus is for the club now, not for any individual, whether it's a player or or manager. Or, or We can only be thinking about the club and doing the very best 
for that. I think come the summer there'll be a number of contracts that will will be looked at. I'm sure by the, by the football club to retain services, but but there's no doubt he's been outstanding since he's come here, and uh, and I'm sure the owners may well look at that come the summer. But he's certainly shown consistently over a year or so now that uh, he has all the potential to be a world class striker. So uh, as I said, uh, but there'll be a number of others. You know, there's others up for review, but. I won't be at this stage. This is Jack Parker, just 28 Premier League goals. There's Suarez, equally Robbie Fowler, small already. He goes into the start of the season as well. Yeah, he's remarkable. Remarkable. He's just his, his hunger and, and desire mixed in aligned with his quality is, is, is really difficult to handle. But he's got wonderful enthusiasm for football and it's great to see him, as I said, getting the goals and, and working so hard for the team.